Welcome back. It's Tuesday, November 14th. I can't believe it's November. Some of you may see this as the first stream today, but we had a lot of technical difficulties. The internet seems to be on vacation for me, um, even though I was the one who was traveling all over the place, not my internet. So today we are talking about the Corey Richens case. Replay crew, love you. Everything will be linked down below as we get into this stream. We are covering the latest Corey Richens court hearing today. That is going to cover the walk the dog letter and the rest of it. I will do a brief road so far after we had had just a brief intermission to deal with internet nonsense. So chat, welcome back. Good to see you, everybody. Fingers crossed that the internet has decided to behave itself. It's like, Emily, we don't even know here. We haven't streamed in forever. She's been streaming from hotels. We don't know what's happening. But I think with a quick restart, all is well. So today, Corey Richens ruling on the walk the dog letter, among other things. I'm going to do a quick road so far right after we play the intro. So let's get started again. Hey there, I'm Emily D. Baker, the internet's go-to legal analyst, breaking down the legal side of the pop culture and entertainment stories we can't stop talking about. I'm a big fan of the cursey words. I've been a licensed attorney for over 17 years, but this is not legal advice. This is where the law nerds unite to talk about facts, not <laughs> Let's get into it. That's exactly what it is. I need the well wishes. May your Wi-Fi be strong. Today it was like, <laughs> no. And my computer's hardwired in and it was still like, mm, no. So sorry for the quick redirect before we got ourselves to Utah for the Corey Richens hearing. Let's do a quick road so far of the Corey Richens hearings that we are dealing with today. Corey Richens was accused back in April, May of 2023 of killing her husband via poisoning with fentanyl. There was a very extensive bond hearing that I covered where we learned a lot about the facts as law enforcement and the prosecution sees them in this case, arguing that she should not be released from custody pending this trial. And she has not been. She remains in custody pending trial. That's where all of this started to come up from because the prosecution is alleging that a letter that she wrote called the walk the dog letter because at the top of the letter it says walk the dog. It is a letter the prosecution alleges that is tampering with witnesses, telling Corey Richens' mother to tell her brother what to tell her lawyer. So I went through all of that letter maybe more than once, on stream if you want to go to the playlist about this case and take a look at that and see all of the information in the letter. Then Corey Richens' attorney, Sky, filed a motion saying that the letter was attorney-client privilege and really tried to fix it. Law enforcement had taken that letter out of her jail cell. They said it was hidden in an LSAT book. Her attorney said it was in an envelope with the attorney's name on it, so therefore it was part of attorney-client privilege. But also, Corey Richens, I think, is watching the news about her case, is watching a lot of information about her case, and got on her got on her recorded jail phone and started telling people in her family that this was this was not a letter telling any witness what to say. It's just a story. It's like a novel. It's like fascinating. And had this long recorded call with her brother about how this isn't all real it's it's mostly a fictional story um and it's it kind of parallels what she's experienced but it's it's not her trying to tell anyone what to do it's just a story well it completely undercuts her lawyer's argument that this is a privileged document whenever this goes to court it's sure going to be real interesting to see it but we know corey richens is a writer because after her husband passed away and or was murdered um, she wrote a children's book about grief and was doing a media tour with that book shortly before her arrest for his murder. That is the short version of what's going on. The defense has alleged prosecutorial misconduct. The prosecution has alleged that the defense is withholding uh, information that needs to be turned over that was taken out of the jail cell because Corey Richens has said that this, this walk the dog letter is just a few pages of like a 61 page transcript. It's like a 61 page novel. I mean, it's such a big book, like for real. If you haven't watched my stream where I covered 
the transcript of Corey Richens' phone call with her brother, then my Corey Richens book will, or my Corey Richens voice will maybe be unfamiliar to you. But she said that this one letter is part of a much larger manuscript. So the prosecution is like, what we're going to need is um, that. We're going to need the rest of that. All of that will come up today. These are the prosecutors, remember, who gave us wonderful one-liners like, um, the defense's level of hyperbole is unproductive. <laughs> so the defense is like, sanctions, and the prosecution's like, turn it over, and the defense is like, fuck you, and the prosecution's like, that level of hyperbole is unproductive. So these attorneys have all gotten uh, spicy already, and I'm ready for this court hearing to get spicy already. Uh, Yellow Pill asked in the chat, I forgot, why did it take a year for her to be arrested? They needed to tie in more evidence because, again, originally there was conversation about whether this was an accidental overdose or what have you, but then they tracked back the person who was selling Corey Richens fentanyl. They needed her phone records, some of which were deleted, some of which weren't. Remember, Corey Richens is the one that was Googling luxury prisons for rich people. And what shows up on the death certificate when someone dies of poisoning and things like that. So her own tech is really what's going to bury her. But sometimes those things take time, especially when we're dealing with a poisoning case. Sometimes it, it might look like an accidental overdose. The thing with the accidental overdose is that in all the overdoses that I've seen in my work as a district attorney, y'all, what is happening with the internet we're gonna just try our best to get through this hearing and figure it out so you know f in the chat for whatever's going on with the internet today i am i am so so deeply annoyed so deeply annoyed you I, i'm so deeply annoyed but i switch browsers maybe that'll help maybe it won't There are days when I'm just like, what What in the world? What in the world? Thank you all for the Fs in the chat. I am so deeply frustrated with it. But um, Law Nerds, you're the best. And y'all are like, girl, we got you. So thank you. The replay crew is going to be like, oh, all the nonsense got edited out. Yes, thank you. It will. Um, that'll, that'll, be, that'll be easier. And with all the rest of it, we're just, we're just going to do our best. So let me... Let me pull up the chat again so I have it. And let's just get to this hearing so we can we can do it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Who just said what's with today today? Thank you for quoting uh, Empire Records. What is with today today? Let's just go to this court hearing. They're, <laughs> the Internet's like, girl, stop talking. Let's cover this hearing. Let's just let's just get to this hearing. Let's do it. I agree. Gosh. All right, y'all. It's time. Let's go to Utah. Let's hope for the best. There might be some turbulence. I don't even know, but let, buckle up. Buckle up. <laughs> let's get let's get to a court hearing. Um, let's see. I'm gonna have to put myself over here so we can see Corey Richens, the defendant at the bottom. We are using Court TV's feed because thank you, Court TV, for having closed captioning and all the rest of it. Let's see. Nope, that's not helpful. I generally use a different browser. However, um, it was suggested to me by StreamYard that it might be a browser issue. So we're just going to hope for the best. I don't know if I have my audio boosting uh, plugin on this browser. I hope that I do. I don't know that I do. So we're going to hope for the best. Let me see. Get this volume bumped. Let me know if you can hear chat. We're going to get started. If we have some audio issues, let me know and I will do my best. All right. Oh, I did leave you guys hanging. Sorry. I left you hanging on the story about, about overdoses. Um, in, my, in my work as a district attorney, we definitely saw overdose cases that came in and you're like, oh, that looks like an overdose or what have you. The drugs are never cleaned up from around the scene. They're always still there. They're not gone because generally when somebody overdoses, they're not cleaning up what's left. They have overdosed. So when 
law enforcement and medical personnel got to Corey Richens' home, there was no fentanyl to be found anywhere. So if if Eric Richens was using narcotics on his own, there would generally be some somewhere. None in the home. Why were there none in the home? Who cleaned it up? Who moved them? And again, if this was an accidental, which happens, if there was an accidental OD, um, why is someone cleaning up the home? There's been no explanation for that. They don't even know where the cup from the Moscow mule went. And Corey said in her Walk the Dog letter and others that he was stashing drugs and hiding them around or hiding them when they traveled and not telling her and stuff. Well, if she's not telling him, how would she know where stuff was to clean it up throughout the house? The cup is gone. There's no indicia of drugs to be found. And those things to me don't lean towards an accidental OD. So, you know, I don't know if she's going to argue it's Utah and she wanted to protect his reputation or whatever, but if you don't know how somebody passed, why would you be running around cleaning up and hiding? Dr. B, do you have news for us? There's a software update this morning, which the other person wasn't aware of. Oh, the internet company updated their software this morning. And that's why things got glitchy. Things got glitchy. At that time. I don't have time for glitchy. I'm just keeping the law nerds up to date on what you're saying. The internet company said shit got a little glitchy. Oopsies. The internet company said, we had a software update. It's a little glitchy today. I, I'm not sorry for the inconvenience. Tell them to come apologize to the law nerds. Wait, Dr. B, you've got to come say sorry to the inconvenience. They would like to see your face. Oh, you don't feel like your hair is done. Okay, never mind. Dr. B doesn't feel like he's judged. He's not judged for the internet. I think you look handsome as hell. You're very sexy, darling. <laughs> he, he, made, he made a face. So apparently the first time he called, they were unaware of the updates. Apparently it should be resolved. They are sorry for any inconvenience. <sighs> Let's go to this hearing, shall we? Shall we? Let's go. <laughs> I like when Dr. B looks all must. He doesn't. I think he looks really cute. All right. Let us go. Let us go. All right, everybody. Let's, we, 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 we're going to just swoop. Goodness. All right. Here's Corey Richens. I don't know if her teeth have been bleached or not. We'll see. Remember, she was trying to sneak Cress White strips into, into custody. I can't believe her lawyer's still her lawyer. I'm going to be perfectly honest. If I am Sky. I don't, I don't know. I'm not a defense attorney. I want to know what Natalie Lawyer Chick and Runkle think. Runkle, I believe, said I would be the fuck out of there. The fuck out of there. Because this walk the dog letter appears to me, sidebar, the walk the dog letter appears to me to be Corey Richens saying, our defense strategy is this. I need brother to get on the stand and say this. I need him to do that for me. Bring me home. She actually says that in the letter. Bring me home. If I am the defense attorney with a client who's trying to get people to lie to me so I can suborn perjury, I'm the fuck out of there. Out. Sky is not. So, I don't know why Sky hasn't fired her client, but let's see what happens. I need to address questions, or if you want to stop me midpoint and ask questions, however the court wants to proceed with that. Perhaps I can begin with a threshold question, if you don't mind. Yeah. Uh, this is the very beginning of the hearing uh, that Court TV has. They didn't have anything um, earlier than this. This is the first point I could find them starting, so that's what it is. In order to grant the motion, I have to make a finding that some kind of conduct by the state's counsel rose to the level of the denial of due process or the denial of Thanks, right to fair trials, right? Correct. A lot of that conduct you cite in your motion has to do the court is beginning to talk about the prosecutorial misconduct they are not quite talking about the walk the dog letter yet tangentially talking about the walk the dog letter but they are talking about the threshold for 
prosecutorial misconduct. There are multiple motions going on in this hearing. So they are talking about it. Um, for those asking, is this the same courthouse as the Paltrow trial? I think it's the same courtroom as the Paltrow trial. Different judge, but same courtroom. Do with letters and filings made after a search of Ms. Rich's cell and statements or allegations regarding witness tampering. Sounds seems pretty good to me. Hope it's good to you. Well, what if they just amended the information? And brought charges for witness tampering based on the, the same searches and the same evidence. And I use evidence loosely. I'm not suggesting yeah. that anything's admissible or wouldn't be subject to a motion to suppress. We'd be right where we are right now, but I don't think that would be misconduct. I don't think so either, and here's why. Um, if they had formally charged her, she would be given due process rights as it relates to witness tampering to the alleged witness tampering, right? We would be able to cross-examine people, she would get a trial, we'd be able to present witnesses, we'd have arguments whether or not uh, evidence was gonna be admissible or inadmissible. The problem with the way the state has characterized this in their briefing is the fact that they have definitively said she's guilty of it without being afforded any of it. Her argument is that the state is overreaching and they are they are getting into misconduct because they have not charged Corey with witness tampering or witness intimidation. They have just accused her of it in filings asking the court, because remember the prosecution has asked the court to do essentially a keep away order or a no contact order so Corey can't talk to her mom or brother. They, but they haven't charged her with it. So Sky's like, look, Your Honor, there's no due process here. There's no way for her to fight these charges because they haven't formally charged her. They've just kind of like said the thing. And I think being charged with something is different than the state saying she witness tampered. This isn't the first time she witness tampered. This is further evidence of witness tampering. All of those things. And then they go on to say, you know, not only did she witness tamper, but because she she witness tampered because she's guilty of murder. Like her witness tampering is a consciousness of guilt. And I can I can pull it out of the briefing. We prepared it in slides, but but that's because that's the argument. Why would you tell someone to make up a story if you're not trying to get out of this case? That's the argument. Sky is correct. That is the argument. That's the problem, and that's the violation of the rule 3.4, 3.6. In the UDA standards is you can't you can you can allege some through a filing or through a, a criminal complaint right she's she's here today because the state's alleged that she committed a number of crimes sure right and she's going to get a preliminary hearing and we're going to go through this entire process before we get to say she's guilty or not guilty and the problem with the state's characterization over and over and over again and in fact it got progressively worse or progressively so the prosecution has two choices here they can either bring separate charges or add charges to this case i think it would be better if they added charges to this case but they have not done that yet so we will see um i just bumped the sound a little because i was able to install immediately a uh, extension so let's see more definitive in their statements that she I'm is guilty of witness tampering, and that's the narrative that the media has picked up. And I think that's the violation of the rule. She said, walk the dog at the top of the letter. Of course, it's what the media picked up. Um, do they memorize all the rule numbers? They, she's done a bunch of briefing on this. So the rules that apply to this specific issue are ingrained in her brain because these are the arguments she's making. But do you have all of them off the top of your head? No, not really. Um, Valkyrie Arts, I missed 20 minutes. What did I miss? My internet being an asshole. <laughs> Rule, not, you know, if they had charged her with it, you're right. We would still have to deal with it. Um, and perhaps there would be some press surrounding it. But we would also then have the opportunity to refute that or. You're refuting it now. Or or due process, right. But by just saying she was guilty of it, and by saying she was guilty of it is bad. They said she thought they thought that what she was doing was engaging and talking to witnesses. I think there's an argument. By saying 
she witnessed tampered as a consciousness of her guilt is worse. By saying she administered the fatal dose of fentanyl is worse. Okay, but she's accused of of murdering her husband with a fatal dose of fentanyl. So that's what they're accusing her of. The difference is in the murder trial, there's due process and you will either be found guilty or you will not be. But with the witness tampering, there's no due process. And that's Sky's biggest argument with this. I don't think this is going to go anywhere. I don't think the court's going to find um, improper conduct by the prosecution in this, but they're, he's letting Sky make her argument. So, and they're tying all of this together. A lot of that water went under the bridge as of the detention hearing. That is their theory of the case, that there was a financial motive, there was poisoning, caused the death of right. her. Okay, you guys, I'm going to refresh this tab so we can boost the sound a little bit. Miguelina, we're at 354 into the hearing. Let me just refresh this tab real quick um, so that we get that boosted audio from a new chrome tab so give me one moment we're gonna do that because because what is today today anyway right what is today um let's get rid of that so give me one moment please and we will do it i love this judge too i like him uh quite a lot i i enjoy him giving the attorneys their time because that's the most interesting thing to me like on a personal aside i enjoy him giving the attorneys time to make their arguments and such because it it's a more interesting for us but b i hate it when judges are sort of like whatever whatever we're moving on let people let people argue their cases um i'm gonna boost this volume a bit chat you're gonna have to let me know we switched browser tabs um and we might go back a little bit the pen behind the ear i mean you know where else are we gonna keep it where else are we gonna keep the pen all right let's get back into this hearing hopefully Today's just streaming is not for the faint of heart, friends. Um, it require it requires a uh, it re it requires a bit of no. Why why won't it share my screen? That's not okay. It re it's not definitely not for the faint of heart. Um, mm -mm. there we go. Let's see. It. It won't share my screen. Okay, this is this is this is a delight today. Mm -hmm. It is. This is this is purely a delight. Um, my system settings now want to do new things, which is also a delight. Uh, because why not? Because why not? What? Why would why would anything work easily? How long has it been, y'all? since we have uh, have had a fight like this with tech. It has been a minute since the tech has fought with us in quite this way. It's just... <sighs> Emily, how was your vacation? Well, I'm still tired. So, you know, why, why not have all of the tech nonsense happen at once? Why not? Let's see. Fingers crossed, y'all. Let's try one more time. Where where is it? Oh, sweetie, no, it's been eighty. It's been eighty three years. Good lord. Which is why when people are like, you know, streaming can be unpredictable. I'm like, it can be. It can be. You got to be comfortable with uh, not having control of everything because sometimes shit just happens and it goes off the rails and there's not much you can do about it. All right, I'm optimistic. I'm optimistic that this boosted volume will left. It's mad I left for BravoCon. It sure is. It's like, girl, you left us. What are you doing? Fingers crossed on volume. To refute that or go through due process, right? By, by just saying she was guilty of it, and by saying she was guilty of it is bad. By saying... She witnessed tampered as a consciousness of her guilt is worse. By saying she administered the fatal dose of fentanyl is worse. So and they're tying there, all of this together. A lot of that water went under the bridge as of the detention hearing. That is their theory of the case, that there was a financial motive. Yes. There was 
poisoning caused the death of right. her, her spouse. I mean, that, that's the case. Then we have requests for things like don't let her talk to certain individuals because, and then once we get into the because, mm -hmm. their justification for the request is we're concerned that she's trying to alter their testimony at a future trial. Stated broadly, everything I just described is part and parcel of ah. lots of criminal cases. Right, except for the fact that they go further right. to say they, they it's like accusing someone of a crime is kind of what happens in criminal cases. We have a theory, right? We, they, it's in the probable cause statement. We came out in testimony at the detention hearing. You're right. That happens in every single criminal case. And we can cross examine people and weigh the credibility of witnesses as we go through. Okay. The problem is, is in their briefing, they dispel or they characterize the defendant's alternative theory or perhaps a potential theory of the defense as a false narrative, that, sh that it's a lie, okay? sure. which completely diminishes the credibility of anything we say. And then they've gone on to say, uh, and all of her witnesses are lying, and she's telling her witnesses to lie. So now- Well, just we're the two witnesses, Sky, just the two, she's telling her mom and her brother. And no matter what she does at trial now, you're kind of stuck with that because the shit's out of the horse on that one. Like you're stuck. Your client wrote this letter that lots of people interpret to mean she is trying to remind her brother what happened. Well, if you're trying to re help someone remember, it's different than saying, please talk to my lawyer and tell them everything you know. It's very different than saying, remember to tell my lawyer this, bring me home. Two different things, two different things. Where anybody we put up there you know, a jury pool is going to say, well, I mean, she witnessed tampering, so obviously these people are lying. And Only if evidence of her witness tampering comes in. The state's already said that anything she says is a false narrative because it doesn't fit their theory. That's a problem. And the rules specifically prohibit the state from commenting on the theory of the case or on alternative theories of the case or on the credibility of witnesses. They can, if she hadn't written the letter, we wouldn't be here though. It's not like the state's just like, hey, these witnesses must not be telling the truth because they're her family. Family members testify in criminal cases and the questioning sort of goes like, you love your family member, right? Yes. You would do anything for them. Yes, yes. And then you kind of leave it at that and let the jury decide if that witness is stretching the truth or their memory because they love a family member. This goes beyond it because she wrote the letter. It's trying to determine where the line between permissible advocacy and impermissible communications that would ugh, well, irreparably damage the jury pool. I acknowledge that however long jury selection was going to be at the end of the detention hearing, it seems like it's three times longer now. I'm with you. I got it. But the judge is saying, sorry, I didn't mean to dirty pause you. Why? There we go. Um, jury selection is going to take a long time. This is a high profile case and the detention hearing was publicized. So people know a lot about this case from a detention hearing, but a detention hearing rules of evidence are different than a criminal trial standard. So the judge is like, right, it's going to take longer. We're going to have to find people who haven't heard of this case. She wrote a children's book about grief and then got arrested for poisoning her husband. So <sighs> yeah. Yes, you're like, now he's making kissy faces. That's much better. We're going to try. <laughs> We're going to try. Y'all, thirst responsibly. Chat, you're the best. I get it. It's a good beard. I get it. And we, through a combination of lengthy and careful jury selection and instructions to whatever jury gets selected, mitigate the harms that you're describing. The judge is like, so Sky, remember? Remember when like we pick a jury who's heard nothing about the case? We just do that. We pick a jury that's had, heard nothing about the case and then we do pretrial motions. And this judge is just reminding her, look, these are for pretrial motions. Part of this I think is publicity, uh, damage control. Okay. 
I'm going to answer this in two ways. Sure. Okay, the first one is uh, I want to address first is the rules. The rules are clear about what they can and can't do, and the rules are clear about prosecutors in particular what they can and can't do, uh, and they have a heightened duty. Uh, and there's case law out there that specifically says they have this heightened duty uh, I mean, it's fair. because it's fair. things that come from the government come with more indicia of credibility, yeah. right? If, if the government's saying she's a liar and the witnesses are liars and any theory she has of the case is a false narrative because it doesn't fit theirs. I appreciate you doing your job, Sky. And I think you do a great job doing your job. I really do. But this is not the state's fault. They're like, whatever witness she brings up from now on, they're going to be like, aren't you a liar? Because it doesn't fit your theory of a case. No, no, it's because she put it in the letter, right? It's because it's in the letter. It's it's because your client did that. That's not on the state. That's on your client. That's a violation of the rules. Like, period, I think. Uh, or at least that's our position. Is they have clearly violated the rules uh, in doing that. Um, and in going so far as to make statements about her guilt, that there's been a violation of the rules. I think what you're getting to is a potential remedy, and I think the judicial effect uh, is that this is everywhere. Uh, we pulled. I mean, but it was everywhere long before this. It was, it was, but it was everywhere before the state started making these comments. It was going to be everywhere. I don't think, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say that all of, you know, this wouldn't have happened or there wouldn't have been news stories. Sure. There would have been news stories about this case, no matter what we did. There would have been news stories about this case, whatever we did. I, I think Sky is just like, um, but like your honor. It's not my um, client's fault. Like, the state is ew. I'm here for it. Like, and period. I think that's a given. The problem is, is like now period. these news stories have adopted the state's interpretation of the letter. And the I would be fun to have, have run away. Right. I mean, I. I oh, I missed what the judge said because I was chatting pop culture. Hold on. Comments. It was going to be everywhere. I don't think, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say that all of, you know, this wouldn't have happened or there wouldn't have been news stories. Sure. There would have been news stories about this case no matter what we did. And, and I think that's a given. The problem is, is now these news stories have adopted the state's interpretation of the letter. And the news stories have Hi, we've talked about the news stories, but we've also talked about the letter. The letter is public. I think it's better that the letter is public so people can interpret it for themselves. Everyone's interpreted it for themselves. I don't think the news, the media is running with a narrative. She said, bring me home and tried to sneak in Crest White Strips and said, walk the dog and said, basically, tell my brother to keep doing this. Run away. I mean, I... I have assiduously tried to avoid. Your Honor, assiduously? Excuse me, camera person, I need you to pan. All right, the court just said I have assiduously tried to avoid news coverage of the case. Let's keep going. Okay. Just to make sure that my consideration of it wasn't polluted by any inaccuracies in the popular media. But even I bumped into the cover of People Magazine, which seems to indicate or have at one time been providing a counter-narrative that... Wait, what was on the cover of People Magazine? Seems to be provided by the defense side. I think there Why is isn't some... this a case of both sides airing their competing narratives to the fullest extent they believe is permissible under the rules? They, they are, no, Your Honor. The request is... Your Honor, that's exactly what they're doing. And I love that the, the pen is back, by the way. I don't know what he was doing, but the pen is back. The This is competing narratives. And the defense has also spoken to the media directly. We're concerned that she's trying to alter their testimony at future trial. Stated broadly, 
everything I just described is part and parcel of lots of criminal cases. Right, except for the fact that they go further to say they, they have a theory, right? We, they, it's in the probable cause statement. We came out in testimony at the detention hearing. You're right. I also reminds me a little of Lisa Barlow, but their voices are quite different. Um, and Sky is much, or seems much taller. I've seen Lisa Barlow in person. I have not seen Sky in person. That happens in every single criminal case, and we can cross examine people and weigh the credibility of witnesses as we go through. Okay. The problem is, is in their briefing, they dispel or they characterize the defendant's alternative theory or perhaps the potential theory of the defense as a false narrative. That she, that Look, they are arguing that your client is telling her brother via her mother to put out a false narrative. And that is based on their investigation. So they're allowed to argue that. They're, that's what's going to happen at trial. They're going to argue that the defense theory of the case is a false narrative because there's no evidence at this point that supports it that it's a lie, okay? Sure. Which completely diminishes the credibility of anything we say. And then they thought- Her letter diminishes the credibility of anything you say. Your client did that. You are in a very tough position because of your client's pen. Look, man, the pen is mightier than the sword and your client might just take herself down with her pen. So. I understand Sky is like, Your Honor, I am in an impossible position because now anything we present at trial, the prosecution is going to turn around and be like, but there's this letter. Correct. You are correct. Correct. I'm uh, going to say, uh, and all of her witnesses are lying and she's telling her witnesses to lie. So now we're in a position where anybody we put up there, you know, a jury pool is going to say, well, I mean, she witnessed Stanford, so obviously these people are lying. Maybe, but none of this would have come up if it weren't for your client's letter. And the state's already said that anything she says is a false narrative because it doesn't fit their theory. That's a problem. And the rules specifically prohibit Prosecution's the state from commenting on the theory of the case or on alternative theories of the case Ma'am. or on the credibility of witnesses. And it's hard to determine where the line between permissible advocacy and impermissible communications that Why is doing really her job. Irreparably damage the jury will. I acknowledge that however long jury selection was going to be at the end of the detention hearing, it seems like up a little bit now. I'm with you. I got it. But why can't we, through a combination of between all the internet nonsense and careful jury selection and instructions to whatever jury gets selected mitigate the harms that you're describing. Yeah. I'm going to answer this in two ways. Sure. Okay. The first one is Sorry, where the last time the internet uh, I want to address first is the rules. The rules are clear about what they can and can't. She's talking about, about talking about the rules of the procedure at this point. Um, so that's what she's talking about. In particular, what they can and can't do. Uh, and they have a heightened duty. Uh, and there's case law out there that specifically says they have this heightened duty uh, because things that come from the government come with more indicia of credibility, right? The government's saying she's a liar and the witnesses are liars. I, Sky, I don't know, man. It's 2023. I don't know if everyone's just like, oh, well, because the government says that it, it's true. I, 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 challenge. Ch challenge. I just, I challenge. <laughs> I think there's plenty that are like, well, they're agents of the government. Do we trust them? I don't know if people just automatically are like, oh, yeah, the government's saying it. It must be true. And any theory she has of the case is a false narrative because it doesn't fit theirs. That's a violation of the rules. Like, period, I think. 
uh, or at least that's our position, is they have clearly violated the rules uh, in doing that. Um, and in going so far as to make statements about her guilt, that there's been a violation of the rules. I think what you're getting to is a potential remedy, and I think the prejudicial effect uh, is that this is everywhere. Uh, we pulled, I mean, but it was it, everywhere long before this. It was, it was, but it was everywhere before the state started making these comments. It was going to be everywhere. I don't think, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say that all of, you know, this wouldn't have happened or there wouldn't have been news stories. Sure. There would have been news stories about this case no matter what we did. And, and I think that's now, when the internet the problem is, is back now back these back news back. stories have adopted back back. the state's interpretation of the letter. And the news stories have is run away. Actually, I mean, I, I have assiduously tried to avoid That's where we were when it cut out. I have assiduously tried to avoid news coverage. Um, it glitched. I don't know why. News coverage of the case right. just to make sure my consideration of it wasn't polluted by any inaccuracies in the popular media. But even I bumped into the cover of People magazine, which seems to indicate or have at one time been providing a counter narrative that seems to be provided by the defense side of it. I mean, I think there why is isn't this a case of both sides airing their competing narratives? to the fullest extent they believe is permissible under the rules. I think you can advocate, but I think it has to be within the rules. And when you go so far as to essentially say she witnessed him, she's guilty of witness tampering, and because she witnessed tampering, she committed murder, and the Today Show pulls a snippet and puts it by her face that says she, you know, told every, she told these people to lie about whatever it is, that's a problem. I, and, and I think that goes a step too far. Yes, we can all effectively advocate. We're gonna do it through briefing throughout this case, I'm sure. Uh, but I think there's a line in what you can say, and I think the rules are very clear on it. And when, you, when the state starts making conclusory statements about her guilt, about the credibility of her witnesses, I don't know about, about that. her credibility, about my credibility, uh, I don't think, you know, and right. when the narrative becomes and, and the comments that we pulled are she's guilty. She's, you know, why are we even doing this? Where is court getting makeup before court? Like, what is happening? Where is she getting makeup before court? Because Corey's wearing makeup in court. I don't know who is bringing in makeup before court. I have questions. This is just a box to be checked. Like, these are local comments. And, and yeah, you're probably going to get some of those, but but the state has taken it a step too far. And the other thing I want to address is there was an alternative method to this. And in the ABA comments, this goes to the second part of your question two questions ago, um, regarding you know if they think she witnessed Hamburg, can they bring a motion and ask the court for relief? Yes. The answer is yes. Okay. Yes, yeah, yeah, that. yeah, that's what we're doing. That's, um, what's happening. that's the literally problem is in the way they characterized it and the statement they make in their brief. Uh, the second problem is that it should have been our position is it should have been done in that way. And the ABA comments speak directly to it. Um, and it's she's talking about the rules again because she's arguing that the prosecutors. Sky made a motion to dismiss based on prosecutorial misconduct. So she is arguing that the court should dismiss this case based on prosecutorial misconduct. The prosecutors made conclusory statements about this defendant's guilt in their pleading motions, and therefore um, this case should be dismissed. I, yeah, no. So she's going now to the ABA comments saying, hey, this is what the comments say. They've overstepped. 8-2... Point one. And what it says is a lawyer participating in a criminal matter should not place statements or evidence into the court record or into a document that is All in your open brain. record under applicable law solely for the purpose of circumventing the standard. The 
if a lawyer has reason to believe that the public release of the record or document would create a substantial probability of harm to the fairness of a trial or other overriding interest, the lawyer should consider seeking a sealing order pursuant to the standard. Pause there. Right pause. Pause. Yeah. Order. Yeah. Pause. Violation. This was all in her briefing. So this is all not just, this is not just repetitive. This is all super repetitive because it's going through the briefing again and again. You know, the rules to be material, it has to have caused irreparable prejudice such that due yeah. process is violated, she can't get her trial. Mm -hmm. So let's stay focused there. I'm just not sure we're at that. What the comments probably said before all of this, the availability of other measures. Dismissal is the ultimate sanction. And correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think you cited a case in which the case was dismissed prior to trial. Your question did not. Rather than during trial. She did not. Am I right about that? Or after. No, she did not. Correct. Um, I didn't find a case uh, that stated that. I, 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 can we just acknowledge yeah. that during trial, the options are so limited. The jury's already right. in the box. We right. can't re right. Jeopardy's attached. Right. I, Prior I, to trial. I think that is a, a different scenario. That's the court's point. The court's point is that during trial, it's a different scenario and it is a drastic remedy because there isn't much else you can do. Prior to trial, the court's like, yo, yo, prior to trial, we can voir dire about it. Um, I think some of the cases, though, that came back on appeal, right? Like, it didn't get dismissed during trial. Uh, the conduct occurred, you know, prior to the trial. Uh, and then those the cases. Corey's came back been in court the whole time. On appeal, you know, for mm -hmm. new trial. I I guess they can. It's just I I do think it's nuanced. It's difficult in cases. I think we can all acknowledge that. Um, but I think that the court was trying to do the right thing. But there is a process. Oh, now there's an echo. Okay, we'll see if we can fix that, y'all. It's just day. It seems, which is very very frustrating. All right. in place to ensure we can do the best we can, to take care that we all do the best we can, not to violate any of her rights to a fair trial. And the state in their assertion and the, and the statements they have made have not done that. And, and the prejudice is you can't, we can't undo that, okay? This letter is, is out there forever. Because your client wrote it. This letter is out there forever because your client wrote it. No one has argued that the client didn't write the letter. Right. Whether it's whether it's ultimately admissible at trial doesn't matter. It does, yeah, it does. Because if it were to come I mean, I'm going to argue it matters because I'll probably move to most of it to suppress it. But of course, you're going to move to suppress it. Sure. Right. So, I mean, but, and I'm not expressing an opinion one way or the other right. about any kind of emotion or in that regard. But imagine the letter came in a trial. Any pretrial prejudice is now mooted. It's in. The actual jurors have seen it and heard it. The problem is, is the statements the state has made during the pretrial phase, right? The, the, the jurors, statements that the jurors aren't going to know about the statements that the state has made until they make it in trial. That's the point that there's no jury yet we haven't even had a preliminary hearing yet we're not even there we're so far the fuck away from there your client wrote the letter he's just like all of this can be fixed in water that uh, they have interpreted this letter's open in multiple interpretations sure. right and, and yes we can get to that i mean it's generous to say that the letter is open to multiple interpretations but sure the court is allowing her to make this much of an argument because I think that the court is just going to deny this motion. After cross-examination and, and 
if it comes it, in. Or, yeah, it, it tried. Right. The problem is, is that there is local, national, global media where the state has interpreted the letter in the way they want and has put out to the world and all of our potential jurors that Corey's lying, that her witnesses are lying, that her theory is false, that uh, that's the problem. The problem is their statements and the way they've interpreted it. And, and the prejudice to her is, uh, I don't, you can't undo that. I mean, sure, you know, we can. False. You can undo that because you just ask the jurors when they're impaneled, have you seen any news about this case? And if they haven't, then they don't know about the walk the dog letter. Probably ask people, you know, questions in board year, but I don't think that's sufficient given the egregiousness of the statement. No, it, it has just been, you know, the way it's not to a high in my opinion, the way it should have been done or the state's or the defense's assertion is they could have moved the court uh, for a motion for no contact order. They, um, they could have filed it under seal. They could have filed the letter under seal. There's no reason to file the letter under seal. What does filing the letter under seal do? We could have we could have had this argument or in a way that wasn't Why would they file it under seal? It wasn't the state saying that her witnesses lied. It wasn't the state saying she's guilty of murder. Those are the problems. And and th the state charged her with murder because they think she committed a murder going to go away. Forever there's going to be this issue that the states said that and, and they can't do that. If the state didn't think she committed a murder, then they're charging her with murder as a real, real, real big fucking problem because the, the ethics of the state are that or should be that. They don't charge a case unless they believe they can prove it beyond a reasonable doubt. I get that Sky is trying. She's like, but your honor, they're accusing her of murder. Yes, they've charged her with murder. That's how that works. That's how all of this works. And, and if the courts, and, and I grant the dismissal is the ultimate remedy, right? I, it's, it's an extreme so like, remedy. Alternatives. I don't think George or any board here is going to hear this issue given That's great. the egregiousness of the state. Of the great. They found jurors who hadn't heard about the Johnny Depp Amber Heard case. They're going to find lawyer or jurors who hadn't heard of this case. You're going to be able to find jurors. This is a voir dire issue. This is not a dismissal issue, period. So I looked at your, or I should the defense's proposed alternative. I'm not prejudging a motion to change venue, but you haven't provided a basis to change venue. Yet. The dynamics that we're talking about, as far as I can tell, exist statewide, nationwide. This case was covered by the EDC. I don't. This case is covered by the EDB. We're international out here, Your Honor. Period. <laughs> no, that you will find jurisdiction that is certainly not the state of Utah that is going to be materially different than Sunday County in terms Correct. of its saturation of media coverage of this case. Correct. Correct. I think there will be other grounds and, and that motion will come. We're okay. fairly early in, in, in the process of this. So I do anticipate moving for a change of venue, um, you know, based on. Well, that's good to know that Sky anticipates moving for a change of venue, but here's the problem. Sky anticipating moving for a change of venue. The judge is already saying, I'm not prejudging this, but where the fuck are you going to go? You want to have a change of venue to where? Because the problem is Sky's already argued multiple times that this case has international attention. So if you're arguing this case has international attention, the judge is going to say, okay, then why is this county different than that county? Like, why, why? If it has that much international attention, it doesn't matter which county you're in. Uh, I saw a very important question in the in the chat by High Low Emily. 
Did you ever wear, wear heels like her in court? Yes. For years, I wore, on average, four-inch heels to court. Often, I would wear a four-inch heel that had a bit of a platform to give me some extra height. Um, then there was a day that my heels got stuck in the cuff of my pants, and I landed on an uncuffed defendant in court, which not only scared me, but terrified the bailiff, and I think also scared the defendant as the prosecutor was falling at him. Um, and then I had spine surgery. <laughs> sneakers. Now sneakers. I, I mean, I, I agree, unless we're going to some tribal land and gone, I would probably not. Sky is probably much younger than I am. I'm going to generously say Sky is probably very much younger than I am. A lot of attorneys my age and a bit older were heavily influenced by the um, unhealthy body image of the lawyer TV shows of our day, Ally McBeal and others. So the look was heavily influenced um, by short skirts and high heels, though I never did the short skirts. I was always nervous that I would have to like bend over to grab a file and it would be too short. I am more of a pants type of a girl. Not many people who wear it has attached, but I think there, there are other issues. But that, that, that type of heel is very common in court. Um, that we believe would support a change of venue. We don't need to get into that. You haven't anticipated, but I, I do anticipate that will be coming. Then we have disqualification in the Summit County Attorney's Office. And yep. I like to tell. I'm not sure why that follows. Here at this point, aren't they the most sensitized to the issues and the permissible bounds of what they can and can't say rather than somebody else? Well, they've been involved. Say that again. I'm just going to say for young attorneys. When, um, say that again is maybe not the way to approach the judge. Just, I know when you're in court, you're in court and things happen and you say things. But, um, pardon your honor, can you, can you repeat that or rephrase that? Subject to whatever ruling I make. I don't understand why this qualification of that office based upon public comments conduct they've taken in prosecuting the case making the motions rather than extrajudicial things like those things that exist in other cases that are discussed in the briefing of counsel and bride. Let's get back to the court saying, tell me why. Here, we're going to back this up. We're going to back this up just a few seconds for the judge so we have some continuity of thought. Sky was just talking about perhaps bringing a motion for change of venue. That's premature. That motion has not been made. They are still in a motion for, they are still arguing the motion to dismiss um, based on prosecutorial misconduct. Cases that were discussed in the briefing of excellent bribes, that kind of conduct. Here, if you're right that they violated some ethical rules, well, now we know. And I would remain confident they wouldn't do it again. I don't think that cures the problem. Tell me why, though, on a going forward. Tell me why. I, what is it about the continued involvement of the Southern County Attorney's Office on a going forward basis that would be prejudicial to this region? I think if the court takes no action against the Summit County Attorney's Office, their sanction is what they said. And I think that as a ma'am to their statement. And I think that's a problem. Um, further, they've been... Ma'am, the court said she is trying to get the entire DA's office from the county removed from the case, get the case dismissed in a, you know, what, the state AG's office or another prosecutorial office to take it over. But the court is like, why is this a problem going forward? And she's like, well, you're sanctioning it. And if you're sanctioning it, um, then that's a problem. No. No. Um involved in this in the investigation allow me a little more allow you. me a little more no uh, ma'am ma'am we have heard what you have to say she's like your honor allow me a little allow me to keep going and the court's like she, she told the court if you don't sanction the prosecute the prosecutor's office then you are essentially siding with them. And that's really not what it means. It means that the court hasn't found that your motion met the standard. It's not sanctioning it. When they began investigating this case, I was having communication with the county attorney's office. So they
Okay, so you're mad at them from the beginning of the investigation. Tell me more about that. They've been involved since the very beginning um, of this investigation and throughout it. Um, and so they are intimately interested. So your client hired an attorney shortly after her husband passed because she knew she was being investigated. 10-4. In the entire investigation as it went forward. Um, further, then they've said that this is our theory. There's no other theory. And the defense theory has got to be a lie because it doesn't fit with our narrative of that. They didn't say the defense theory has to be a lie because it doesn't fit with our facts. They said the de the defendant is putting forward a theory in the letter that seems to be witness tampering because it doesn't it doesn't have any grounding in facts. Right. The problem is is you know there's an insinuation that perhaps they drove the investigation and this is this is where it ended up and and if it's it took well, three years to do file against her. In their, in their briefing, okay? okay. Um, ma'am, ma'am, they're not the judge. The prosecutors should believe she's guilty if they're prosecuting her because they shouldn't be prosecuting people that they're just like, uh, maybe, because you need, the charging standards are that you believe the defendant can be proved to have done it beyond a reasonable doubt. The amount of times as a prosecutor, you look at a case and you're like, well, that person probably did it. Seems like they did it. But I don't know if we can prove that they did it. And then you don't file the case or you refer it for further investigation or whatever. You don't move forward on the case. You don't move forward on a case unless you think they did it. The prosecution charging her with the crime is a statement that they believe that she did it. That's, that's not misconduct. That's the job. But she keeps arguing that the prosecution has stated that they believe Corey Richens committed murder. They stated Corey Richens committed this murder when they charged her with the murder. She is innocent until proven guilty. That is the standard. But the prosecution files it believing that they can prove that and overcome that burden. So arguing over and over and over to the court that the prosecution stating that they believe she's guilty is somehow misconduct is just not a great argument for me. I think the stronger arguments are that the prosecution is tainting the jury pool if that's what you want. Thank you for your patience, chat. Okay. And because the prosecution has been uh, also, it is not uncommon. Sky is arguing that the prosecutor's office works was working with law enforcement in the investigation. That's not uncommon, like ever at all. It's not improper. It's not uncommon. It's not odd. It's it's very very often the case that when there is a case that is particularly challenging, the prosecution will tell law enforcement, "Have you?" gotten all the digital evidence have you gotten this these are the things we need you to go look for in your investigation those things exist or they don't investigation i don't you know maybe they didn't go look for any i, I think the implications of it's a great closing argument where okay. administration's getting railroaded but um <laughs> the judge it's a great closing argument that your client's getting railroaded but uh, that's not where we're at here. I love this judge. He's funny. I don't, you know, maybe they go look for any. It, it, I, I think the implications of... It's a great closing argument where okay. administration's getting railroaded, but I'm not sure that justifies... Prosecutorial misconduct? By itself. I, I think uh, it's... Disqualifying the Southern County Attorney's Office. I think in order to fix the narrative that the state has put out there. You talked to people or whatever. You don't get to fix the narrative that the state put out there. I'm so in a, the state didn't put out a narrative. Your client wrote a walk the dog letter. And then the state started drooling because it is very rare that a defendant is this blatant in telling a witness what their story should be. Uh, the state went letter.
Of course they filed a motion because she is seemingly tampering with witnesses. She's telling them what to say. Chat. I appreciate all of your railroading comments. There needs to be drastic measures. And one of those could be... I'm, thinking. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Damn it. You've broken me. I mean, I think, I think that is the only, in, in our, the only way to correct the violations that we've alleged is to say, you know, that, that they make mistakes, Olivia violate might the rules, and therefore they're not on the case. I think that puts us back a little bit to center where now we can go forward and <clears throat> We can have that theories, and, and, and there's a message out there that says, look, <clears throat> they shouldn't have made those statements. They can't make those statements. And by disqualifying them, I think he's the not going to disqualify the entire I think it's a their message to potential jurors that that's incorrect. And, and that the Sky, ma'am, if potential jurors are watching all of this, they're not going to be jurors. They know too much about the case. Is it that problematic as well, though? sending a message. I mean, we have to exclude all the jurors that had any sense of that that are going to draw any conclusions upon that. We need potential jurors that were agnostic about that, wouldn't we? Yes. Ding, ding. Yes. I mean, they yes. They have an opinion one way or the other regarding like, motives or conduct of any yes. participants. Correct. Correct. Yep. Right, but there's yep. Some, I, nope. I, I just, I don't think without Ma'am, no. Proper remedies from the court. It restores Corey's right to a fair trial. Okay. I, I, I mean, at the end of the day, I just. We're glad that's your thought. We can't, doing nothing, essentially, just. Dr. P, you scared me. Adds credence to what they said. And, and she's in a place now where, you know, we can't call these witnesses. I mean, we're, we're going to call witnesses. Dr. P, it's not going to give me an you know, update, BRB. We're on the presupposed motion, or assumption that you know the world has taken that, that they're liars because that's what the state said and and they can't they can't make those you couldn't make those in a closing argument they couldn't get up there and say those things for a reason right, right? so you should be able to say it now well wait, let's be more specific about that if they wanted to get up and say that for example this richards testified mm -hmm. testified to x y and z I think the state would be able to properly say, listen, compare X, Y, and Z to evidence A, B, and C. The inconsistency shows that X, Y, and Z is a false narrative. That is proper close to argument. Uh-huh. Based on evidence. Fair enough. Right? Yeah. And, and you, you, could, you could, that is, I mean, that's what you advocate in closing arguments. You can say, you know, we presented this, the jury gets away with credibility. Repeating what the judge just said back to the judge is not going to help fix the situation. He's not kicking the prosecutor's office off. You've not argued that he should. Um, and we're done. Of witnesses, including the defendant, um, and, and make their own determination. They've circumvented the entire, that entire process by saying it. They didn't, though. There's no hurry. They, they, they predispositioned everybody to look. Predisposed. They did not predisposition everybody to believing she was guilty. There are plenty of people, I am sure, in the world that have not paid a fuck bit of attention to this case. I know when I talk to people, even people that follow my podcast that haven't heard of this case. How many times have I talked about this case? There are people who follow me that still don't know about this case. There are plenty of people who do not give a fuck about this case. Look at these people through a lens that they're lying. To look at Corey through a lens that she's lying. To look at Corey through ma'am, then if they have any lens to view your client through, they're not going to end up on the jury because they're not unbiased. The lens that she is trying to get people to lie for her, to look at counsel, frankly, through a lens that I'm doing improper, you know, I'm, I'm doing the various or criminal acts is what they've alleged. Your client in the letter asked a witness to lie to you. So, yeah, people are going to look at you and be like, hey, I got a question. Why are you still representing this client? 
So that's the problem. They have essentially hit every single part of the rule that you're not supposed to violate. And the, and the comment to 3.6 lays out things that are materially prejudicial. So I think that answers that question where they're, where they're making these statements now, 3.6 in the comments specifically says, these things are materially prejudicial. And those are the things that they've done here. Okay. I understand your position. It won't be the last time you get to talk. Let me hear from the state. Was there anything else you wanted to put on the record in the first place? No. For those of you in the chat asking what is by Sky's feet, it looks like the door in the floor of the courtroom to put uh, power. There's generally power plugs if you need to put in a uh, different type of AV equipment. If you look at the bottom of council table, you'll see a little door kind of flapped open where they've got all their laptops plugged in. So that's generally for power. Let's hear what the state has to say. The state's going to be like, this level of hyperbole is unhelpful. Um, I'm really confused about what the closed captioning is doing. Was there anything else you wanted to put on the record in the first place? No. Okay. Mr. Good afternoon, Good afternoon, Your Honor. Not good afternoon, Doctor. Oh, State's briefing is a little general in terms of we haven't done anything wrong, there's no prejudice, so let's just move on. Uh, address Ms. Lazar. So he was waiting for the court to be ready, which I really appreciate. So he said, I don't see any prejudice, let's just move on. And now he's going to ask the court specifically to address exactly what he wants argument that the things that the state said in its briefing related to the walk the dog letter are not the types of things that the state would be allowed to say in closing argument. Your Honor, they are the things that would be allowed to say in closing argument. It is their argument, their advocacy based on facts in the record. Um, and that's an important point here is that consistent with First Amendment jurisprudence on public access, consistent with the court's rulings on public access, these are public debates. These are the debates where the state makes its case in a filing. The defense has an opportunity. He said that the state makes their case in a filing and then the defense has an opportunity to refute it in filings. He's like, we're in, you know, the litigation part of the litigation. To rebut that case in the filing. They've just rebutted it, not only in the prior filings, but right here, right now at this moment. And that is fair litigation. That is how cases are litigated in criminal courts throughout the entire office every single day. Would you acknowledge that during jury selection, we will need to identify jurors that had no knowledge of a whole long list of things, <clears throat> including the briefing and media coverage regarding the walk the dog letter? And the court is now basically asking the prosecution to affirm what the court's already thinking, which is, well, during voir dire, aren't we going to need to make sure jurors don't know about this case? Yes. The any number of other things. Yeah. Yes, Your Honor. Um, undoubtedly, the court and the parties will select um, a fair and impartial jury. That will take longer than normal. That will take a jury pool larger than normal, an enlarged questionnaire, expansive law gear. The extensive log deer is uh is the wild and of uh <laughs> of closed captionings but it said an extensive wadir wadir we need an extensive 
voir dire in a high profile case. And that is a part of any case that has any type of publicity, even cases that aren't televised, that are subject to intense local scrutiny in local newspapers and what have you. This is just what it is. Um, but there are people in Summit County who are not following this case, at least the best or so. Um, <laughs> and there are There's at least people, people, people who aren't following the case over there. Who we can see is very partial. Summit County Court said a jury is going to pouch for a Not tremendous. Great argument. The Summit County Courthouse sat a case in the Gwyneth Paltrow case. That is a case that has a much higher profile than this case. The court was right to note that much of this publicity is both national and international. Um, more so probably than some of um, I can think of two pending cases this court, one civil, another criminal, that are receiving as much local ink as this case. And the court will see some accounting juries in those cases as well. As it relates to the walk the dog letter and kind of this instant discussion we're having, the Algiers case that uh, the court in another state or the, the defense sites in its briefings in dicta makes, and I think pertinent that the, the publicity at issue um, in the in the in the prosecutorial misconduct and retrial motion was kind of a drop in the bucket to the overall publicity of the case received over the park. He's arguing case law about the case. Here, here as well. We set out Jerry's case, it's case law. Anything else from the state of Missouri? Ruby Frankie's also in Utah. Yeah. Your Honor, if, if your questions are answered, I will sit down. We'd love to floor it. We love a confident attorney. Your Honor, need I say more? And the court's like, nope. <laughs> Great. The first point I'd like to uh, bring up, and we addressed it in our briefing, is the state in, in their response reading to this doesn't address really prejudice, as the court just noted. They don't address it at all. Um, Ma'am, you talked not an ounce about prejudice to your client. You just basically said, but your honor, they said she was guilty. I mean, essentially, um, what they say is it maybe doesn't matter, but this is out there and, and so be it. Um, the next thing, I, I think it's important to look at the statements. The, the state is saying that they could say these things in trial. They could say these things, perhaps some of them, if they're supported by evidence in, in, in closing argument. What they can't, where are you going? What they can't say, and I think uh, I'll pull out a few of the ones that I think are particularly problematic. Is, you know, they first say that the court needs a no contact order to prevent the defendant from engaging or further engaging in witness tampering. Um, essentially implying that she's witness tampered before. In the letter, the letter is the alleged witness tampering. The further witness tampering is anything that happens after the letter. Right, but I come back to the hypothetical if they had just charged her. But they haven't. That's the problem. I know, but isn't that better for her? Well, yeah, I don't want you. <laughs> the court's like, I keep coming back to, but what if they charged her? And Sky's like, but she hasn't. And the court's like, but isn't it better for her that they haven't accused her in criminal proceedings 
of witness tampering. They're just asking for a stay away order. More charges. Right. I agree with you. But uh, is it a proper exercise of prosecutorial? I need whoever the camera person is look. When the judge and the attorney are sparring, I need you to go back over there because Sky is cutting off the judge while he's talking. And I need to see what's going on between Sky and the judge because she, I can hear her going, but, 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 and cutting him off. I'm going to back up a little bit because that's wild. Engaging, or engaging I'm engaging in Um, Essentially implying that she's witnessed tampered before. Right, but I come back to the hypothetical if they had just charged her. But they haven't. That's the problem. I know, but isn't that better for her? Well, yeah, I don't want no more charges. Right. I agree with you. But I, is <laughs> it a proper exercise of prosecutorial discretion to say that is a distraction to prove that lesser charge? Yes. We're going to focus on the top level charges. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. The court. Isn't that proper prosecutorial discretion to say that the rest of this is beside the point and you don't want to end up trying to prove whether or not this letter is witness tampering or not when you're trying to prove the murder case? You just prove the murder case. And if those witnesses testify, you go, but this letter exists. That's it. And, and I don't. No, you're losing right now. So the only reason I raise that is to say, in that alternative universe that I am describing my hypothetical, mm -hmm. the information, the preliminary hearing, all that stuff would be transmitting the message. She's a witness tamperer. That is not different than we have here. It might be worse. It might be, but it might not be. And here's why. The state concedes in their brief that they didn't have evidence that she ever passed the letter or witness tamper, right? right. right. So. We would actually get to stand up here and, and say or, or cross examine people to essentially prove that that wasn't true. Well, that's probably so, not to and get I don't too want, far in yeah, the direction, I mean, I but why matters. I'm disinclined to prevent her from talking to her mother and her brother. Okay. But the the issue is is that they have just declared that she's guilty of it, right? Instead of no, they've said it appears that this is what she's doing. We don't want her to talk to her mom and her brother anymore. I need to get a zoomed out pan so I can see the court's face when she keeps talking over the judge. Is there anybody in the world that thinks the state of Utah doesn't believe she's guilty of the crimes for which she's been charged? No. Is there anybody in the state of Utah? Well, I hope so. Said, is there anyone in the world? that doesn't believe that the state thinks she's guilty when the state charges her. No. When the state charges someone, what it says is, we believe that this person did this crime. It is your job to defend them. It is the jury's job to decide if we can prove that beyond a reasonable doubt. Well, I guess no, no, not that they believe personally, but that there's anybody out there think the state is just doing this as theater. I mean, I, <laughs> the state's position from the beginning is she's guilty. Right. I don't think they've been unclear about that. No, but but the problem is, is that they... If the state doesn't think she's guilty, I would argue that it's prosecutorial misconduct to charge someone and then go, let's see. You should believe that you have the evidence to prove that this person is guilty beyond a reasonable doubt before you charge them. I had the advantage of being a charging deputy for a while while I was recovering from back surgery. And all I did all day long was review cases and file charges. And there were a lot of times I went, I mean, yeah, probably. But I don't think we can prove it on what you've got. So either get more or this isn't getting filed. The amount of things we do not file is substantial. Substantial, the amount of cases that don't get filed. Okay. Use doing her the job. way they've drawn the inference between witness tampering and the ultimate decision that the jury is going to make in this case after it hears evidence is that because she witness tampered is a consciousness of guilt. You know, she induced people to lie. Sky is correct. The prosecution is going to use that letter to say 
she knows she's guilty. Ladies and gentlemen of this jury, this defendant knows that she is fucked. And there is this letter where she says, we need this defense. Oh, brother, can you please tell my attorney these things? Get me out of here. Bring me home. That's exactly what they're going to argue. Sky, you have read this situation correctly. You continue to read it correctly. The problem is your client wrote the letter. Because she's guilty, right? Isn't so that's similar to some of the arguments that we heard, in, on which I relied during the detention hearing regarding yes. the internet searches. Yes, yes. The court's like, but we also, Sky, sweetie, remember, your your client was Google searching luxury prisons for rich people. So they're going to argue the letter's consciousness of guilt, but they're going to argue that the internet searches before she was ever arrested are also consciousness of guilt. Consciousness of guilt, trying to hide conduct. I guess what I'm saying is... <laughs> hold on, hold on. She can't answer this question and I'm living. The court's like, but ma'am. And she's like, um, I'm just going to remain silent. Guilt. You know, she induced people to lie because she's guilty, right? Isn't so, that similar to some of the arguments that we heard in on which I relied during the detention hearing regarding the internet searches? Consciousness of guilt, trying to hide conduct. I guess what I'm saying is that. Why is making arguments regarding a particular piece of evidence, admissible or otherwise, showing consciousness of guilt, why isn't that a, a uh, proper conduct rather than improper conduct, whether it's it gets conduct. media attention? It's, it's, or not? It's, it's, because the rules specifically say that they can't comment on her guilt. The rules specifically say you can't comment on the credibility of her witnesses. The rules specifically, I mean, it, it's clear in the rules. I, I, not it's very clear in the rules, but you, what you can't do, and that's what it's done. But you're not suggesting that the rules. Not commenting on the credibility of witnesses goes to other things. This is not, this, she's conflating different phases of trial. And she keeps doing it, and the court keeps going, but no, but no, but no. Prohibit <sighs> as a matter of law making an argument regarding consciousness of guilt in a pretrial fine. They don't. Correct. Correct. I think when you when you tie it to the ultimate, it, it, I think it depends on the context, no. right? I think you could no. use the phrase consciousness of guilt in a number of different ways that doesn't say. She witnessed, she's guilty of witness tampering. We're telling you she's guilty of witness tampering. And because she's guilty of witness tampering, she's doing it because she's guilty of murder. And, and that's what you can't say. You can't go that far. Yes, there, there, are, there are probably a number of ways you could argue that in, in, in different ways that may not violate the rules. But the way they've done it here violates the rules. Because How? there's- How? How how does anything they've said in their filings violate the rules of procedure? Specifically, commenting on her guilt in this case. Um, yeah. The other thing I <laughs> like to more. Uh, yeah. address is the the APA standards essentially say there's different ways to do it. Like you could have done it under seal. Um, this would have been an issue. Um, we've spent, or she spent uh, a vast amount of money. Taxpayers have probably spent a vast amount of money and time on this issue where we're not working, you know, we're limiting our ability to work on other things. We're doing this. Ultimately, this rests on or what's alleged she violated jail procedure policy. Um, as well, if they, they make that sure. determination, okay? The jail has internal remedies to deal with that. And the jail has decided that she 
recently uh, violated one of those, and they have prohibited her from contacting her mother. So there were other ways to accomplish this goal without creating a media narrative with the state's position on her guilt and the credibility of her witnesses. And I think I just want to turn the court to um, I saw this question in the chat from Gwendolyn. Is she angling for a mistrial? No, because trial hasn't started. She is asking for the case to be dismissed based on prosecutorial misconduct and asking the Summit County District Attorney's Office to be disqualified. None of those things are going to happen, but that's what she's asking for. Um, so it's a motion to dismiss that I covered a number of streams ago. I think we have a playlist for this case. If we don't, I'll put one together after stream but that's what she's arguing for. Uh, go. The Hensley case, we relied on it in our briefing. Is that the Fifth Circuit case? It is. It's a Fifth Circuit case. Yeah. That was during trial though, right? It was. Okay. Um, and, and I... The court keeps bringing up, but that was in trial, right? Because the, the remedy that she's asking for is generally a remedy that comes up during trial because jeopardy is attached. And the court talked about this hours ago, it feels like. Jeopardy is not attached yet. We're not even at the preliminary hearing yet. We are so um, far from all of that that we, the court's like, we're not even there yet. We're not, we don't have a jury. We don't need this extreme remedy. We can just voir dire them and be like, hey, did you hear about these things? And if they say no, then like, we're good. Period. I get that it, sometimes it, it's different. It can be different during trial because you've been paneled the jury. Those are the right. things we're seeing at, right? I think that's, that, that, well, that yeah. is different. By implication, no other available alternatives to mitigate potential prejudice. Correct. Correct. Um, but it's still, and, and, and maybe maybe they yeah. don't get litigated. I don't know. I mean, I don't know the answer to that. Maybe, I don't know how many people, I, how many arguments are had. If, if, this were a, if this were a case without a lot of press, okay? If this were normal course, like my 60 other, whatever cases I have, right? That are going through the courts, you know, sure, we litigate things on the record, but nobody's looking at the record, right? It's not getting broadcast out to potential jurors. This is a concern in every case with media attention and public attention. But that doesn't mean you can't voir dire around it. And so when you look at, it, at those types of cases in, in a normal course, it may not be problematic. I mean, it may still be a violation, but prejudice may not be as grave as it is in this case. I don't think there's any prejudice. Because, you know, nobody would see it, right? The jurors, you know, I, we have panel juries all the time that have never heard of my clients and have no clue about anything that happened. And, and you know, they go about the normal course of business. And so the only thing that's brought to their attention are the things that are set in trial. And so that's why I think we but that's going to be the case here too. They're going to ask jurors, have you heard of this case? And if there's a juror that's like, I listen to all of the podcasts. I see all of the things. I'm obsessed. They're going to say, thank you. You're excused. You are. That's the court's entire argument. The court's entire argument is you're going to be able to find a jury that has not heard of this case. You see most of the case law come from that because that's how majority of the cases are like settled. Or when you're this listening. case is different because this case has so much publicity. It, greater care should be taken to ensure we're not tainting a jury pool, to ensure we're not saying the things in pretrial matters that we couldn't say at trial because the effect is the same. We're, we're not. potentially causing the same harm that would happen in those other cases not. to a jury when it's broadcast to the world where we have, Damn. you know, the, I have jurors that have likely heard of it. And I don't. There's no jury.
we're not there yet. There is no jury yet. There is no prejudice because there's no jury. Freaking internet. Sky is making the same arguments. Grave sanctions against the state. Sky is saying, without grave sanctions against the state, this case cannot be salvaged. I disagree. We're not in the middle of trial. You're a year away from that, at least. Um, there's plenty of people that don't give a crap about what's going on. You're going to be able to find a jury. So these are some of the same arguments that are being made in Idaho with the Koberger case. They've not asked for a dismissal based on this, but she's saying there needs to be a dismissal because the state, the state made this walk the dog letter public. <sighs> no. I, and we suggest that they be removed and, and the start over or continue forward. So I should say, have a clean slate um, in order to, you know, put some order back in and, you know, go back and ensure her fairness, uh, her right to a fair trial. Um, these premises aren't lip service. I mean, this is essentially the most important thing we can be arguing at this point is whether or not uh, we can ensure that she gets a fair trial. I, I think that ultimately is the most important thing. Voidier, you are going to get a fair trial when you impanel a veneer and do Voidier. You've got to get to a preliminary hearing. Can we just go to that? I'm ready for the preliminary hearing. Please. In a criminal case. Uh, you know, the, the lofty reason a lot of us started doing this in the beginning because we were going to be a champion for the rules. But, uh, and, and I don't mean to make light of that. I, I think that's true uh, for most of us who do this. But it is the most important thing. And so it can't be just, well, as the state says, like, too bad it's out there. We're just going to keep going. It's fine. It's not fine. Uh, it's not fine because they violated the rules. And the result of that is worldwide. It's not fine. Nothing is ever fine. <laughs> it's going to be fine. Prejudice and world that thinks that her, her liars and her, her witnesses and her counsel, you know, are going to misrepresent things to them and lie to them. And I, that, that's a hard thing to remedy. The hard thing to remedy is the letter that your client wrote. Because if there are people that think that everything Corey Richens says is a lie and everything Sky says is a lie and all the rest of it, they're not going to be seated on this jury whenever that happens. So the court is saying that's not the problem. Thank you. I look directly at the camera. I'm trying. I want to see what the judge is doing. Can we look at the judge? The issue before the court is defendant's motion to dismiss due to prosecutorial misconduct. We should have judge. The gravamen of defendant's motion is that. Gravamen means main point. Can we see the judge, please? Can, can... Show me the judge. Due to conduct by the Summit County Attorney's Office, defendant has been denied due process and her right to a fair trial. Specifically, defendant asserts that statements made by the Summit County Attorney's Office in briefing related to walk the dog letter briefing related to the Summit County Attorney's Office request for further limitations on Ms. Richens' ability to speak with her family members. There is, the camera is sat in the jury box. It is my understanding that reporters are also sat in the jury box. So there is a reporter typing on a laptop somewhere near the, the camera and that's what's being picked up. It's not me typing. Um, it's not, I'm not the one typing. It wasn't me. It wasn't me.
and included statements that violate rules 3.4 and 3.8 of the model and Utah rules of professional conduct. Those statements include things like, quote, defendant is engaging in witness tampering or needs to be prevented from further engaging in witness tampering. The motion for no contact was based on the defendant's witness tampering and the breach of jail security procedures. The you walk the dog letter illustrates the defendant's consciousness of guilt with respect to certain explanations made by the defense for certain actions that no such link exists in the evidence that defendant concocts a false narrative that defendant's own handwriting she attempts to induce her brother to testify falsely that she is facilitating witness tampering and supporting a false factual narrative that she is giving her mother instructions to induce her brother to testify falsely that this may indeed not be the first time the defendant witness tampered uh, and that defendant is making a frantic dishonest attempt um, to explain how fentanyl came to be involved in this case. So he's explaining essentially what is in the defense motion, the state's motion, and what the argument is. I'm just so neurodivergent, it really helps me to see the person who is speaking rather than just listening, and I really need you to pan over and show us the judge. When viewed in isolation, these comments raise concern that they would ah! That was me. That I can't even blame the internet on that. That was a that was a me issue. That's a that's a me situation. <sighs> today. All of the internet today. This by tainting the view of potential jurors in Summit County, the state of Utah, nationally, internationally, regarding Ms. Richens, her credibility, credibility of her counsel, and her ability to defend herself in a fair jury trial. But when read in context, and given how these comments are anchored to that's the thing you're about to use. Evidence in the record and motions made by the parties. These comments are within the bounds of professional conduct under Rule 3.5. That is the court saying you lose. These comments are within the bounds of the rules of professional conduct. Four and 3.8. These are examples of permissible advocacy on behalf of the state in support of its request for things like further limitations uh, on Ms. Richard's ability to discuss, contact, correspond with certain family members. And also, I don't, I don't think Sky thought she was going to win this argument. I don't think Sky went into this going, I'm going to be shocked if the judge rules against me. This was always a Hail Mary and a long shot, but it was also to put the other media narrative out there, right? This was Sky's way of firing back at the walk the dog letter. I don't think there's a lot you can do with that walk the dog letter. The letter's really fucking bad. In response to arguments made by defense counsel related to other litigation topics. Moreover, before this issue arose relatively recently, this case had already received an inordinate amount of media attention. An amount so large that it is frankly not in the interest of justice. But the, the court is making very clear his opinion on media coverage of this case. The court saying, this is an amount of media attention 
that is not in the interest of justice is not exactly what I want to hear from the court, but it's also why I want to see the cameras more like we saw. The court is in the middle of denying this motion to dismiss. Amount of media attention. An amount so large that it is frankly not in the interest of justice. But the First Amendment works the way it works, and I can't prevent that. I appreciate this, Judge. This is a lot of media attention for a case, but also the First Amendment exists, and we have a free press, and the press is able to cover the things that people are interested in. People are interested in this case. First of all, female defendants make up a much smaller portion of overall defendants in the U.S. You don't always get female defendants. Second of all, female defendants in homicide cases are, I don't know, they attract an inordinate amount of attention. People are curious, like, what is going on with that? And then when you have cases that are domestic cases dealing with somebody being accused of killing a spouse, people are interested. Then you add on a children's book written about grief and this walk the dog letter and people are like, tell me more about it. And then you've got all the lawsuits going on with relation to the will and the fact that right after this, you know, murder or death took place, you've got Corey Richens punching out her sister-in-law because her sister has become the executor of the state because the husband thought that she was trying to poison him. There's a lot going on to be interested in this case. This is a very interesting case. So, you know, and then she's in this walk the dog letter being like, oh, they're all jealous of me. You don't understand. My sister-in-laws are jealous of me. It's, it's just kind of appalling. And people are like, ew, tell me more. So here we are. Interested. What the court can do and require counsel for the defense and the state to engage in are you gonna limit they can say? is measures to mitigate any potential harm from publicity regarding the advocacy in this case on a going forward basis. And that would include careful, lengthy, and detailed or dire jury selection. Yes. Exactly. This is what we've been saying. You have to ask the jurors. Do you know about this case? I guarantee you there's going to be plenty of people that are like, what? I got other shit to do. I don't give. I don't I don't care. I have other things to do. We will need to identify jurors that do not have any preconceived notions about the subject matter of this case or any of the people involved in it, the parties, counsel, witnesses, etc. That may be a lengthy task, but it was made lengthy long before this issue arose, given the pre-existing publicity regarding this case. Moreover, these arguments would have been appropriate and without objection, the court expects, had Ms. Rich. Oh, yes, we've seen in multiple filings that the court has talked about and others have talked about the fact that there are at least four production companies uh, making movies or docuseries or whatever about this case. There are going to be a bunch of them. Yep, there will be a bunch of them. Has Impact, Nightline Impact done one yet? I'm sure they will be. Has actually been charged with witness tampering. In that situation, the court would be making determinations about whether or not there was probable cause for the charge and there was probable cause to bind her over for trial. And these very same arguments regarding potential consciousness of guilt and materiality of the letter would have been made and would have been wholly appropriate. Here, based upon the briefing currently before it, the court simply isn't persuaded that the conduct of the Summit County Attorney's Office violates Rules 3.4 3.8 or has caused no. Ms. Richens Denied. denial of due process or a denial of a right to a fair trial. Denied. The court is confident that it can preside over a sufficient or dire process
I need the rest of the hearing because at some point they would have had to have talked about whether or not there was a no contact order. Just to ensure that Ms. Richards does in fact receive a fair trial. For these reasons, the defendant's motion to dismiss due to prosecutorial misconduct is denied. That's it. There's gotta be more, there's gotta be more to this hearing. Um, yeah because they needed to address, though I haven't seen a ruling on it, they needed to address the no contact order. Though the court could have done it as a written order, I pulled up all of that, um, and there was no written order recently. So where is the rest of the hearing? I thought that was the entire thing. I need more. Uh, let's see. There, I don't see any more on a hearing because the court must have um, ruled on it. Let's see. There's more to this hearing. Let's go to KUTV2 from Salt Lake and see if we can catch up with the rest of it. You're going to have to give me one moment because they have a two-hour hearing. So there, there is a second part after the judge denied that part of the hearing. So we're going to go to the second part of this hearing and hope that the internet bears with us. Um, all right. Hopefully, this gets us to where we need to be. Yeah, there is, there's a lot more hearing. I thought that um, Court TV had the whole thing. They do not. So let me, let me zoom, zoom to the next part of this hearing. Because we need to go through the no contact order with the walk the dog letter. So we're just in it. We're in it today, y'all. So that, I think that was the first part of the hearing. Hopefully, this is the proper second part of the hearing. Let's go. That point where oh, fuck. This hearing. This, this audio is way worse. Oh, damn it. <sighs> okay. Let's... Um, let's get us to where the court hearing starts. Okay. So, initially, the only thing the state has to show is the materiality of the information requested from the defense before the defense is required to either make the This is getting into, I'm sorry about the audio, I've boosted my tab as much as I can. This is getting into the defense being ordered to turn over information. There are multiple hearings that needed to take place this day. The motion to dismiss, the motion for no contact order, and a motion to compel turning up. Um, can I gain it up? I've gained it up all the way that I can. So I can attempt, I can attempt to switch tabs. I tried that earlier and it didn't work. But since then I've been kicked out of this stream like four times because of the internet. So you never know. Let's try one more time and see if that will work for us and see if I can share another tab um, and gain it up some more. But I'm not, I'm not convinced that I can. So let's, it's just that kind of a day to day. Oh, uh, let's see. The internet won't let me be great. And I'm mad about it. Um, let's see. Nope, Chrome will not let me share a different tab. So there is not much I can do unless I yeet myself back out of my stream and come back in. So we are going to have to fight through this audio. I've got it gained up as much as I can. I will try to switch uh, plugins to do another one to gain the volume up while we are live because otherwise we're not going to finish this today. And I really want to finish this hearing with y'all today. Assert a constitutional privilege, such as one against self-incrimination, an evidentiary privilege, such as the attorney-client privilege, or a counter-argument that you're wrong, it's not material. Why aren't we at that point where you're saying, for example, it's privileged, maybe additional arguments will be raised in the briefing that would occur behind seal, such as what they want would Ms. Richens right against self-incrimination and or it's not material. 
that's what I'm trying to have to play out through the adversarial process. And I don't know if it's in the document. Right. I, I think perhaps the state needs to, to make a good cause showing that they're entitled to it at this before we get to whether the materiality of it. I, I think that's where we differ. And the reason I say so is, and I'm happy to be educated about this, but State v. Spry, 2001, UT Act 75. We further hold that the good cause, quote unquote, under Rule 16C requires the prosecution to establish only the materiality of the information requested from the defense before the defense is required to make such, such information available to the prosecution. But also that things like the right to the privilege against self-incrimination is paramount and therefore overcomes that good cause consideration. The state in its motion is saying, we think there's good cause here because based upon our interpretation of the content of the jail calls, well, that's this is factual, 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 partially factual narrative. Therefore, it's here. I don't okay. know if that's true. It, it, if, and if that's the court's position, they've only made that as it relates to the 60 pages, not the entire packet. I agree. So I- Are we talking about the entire packet? Well, it was unclear Mr. to Nate me- Mr. says yes. I, it, <laughs> it, yes, I was asked to turn over the entire packet. I Is that accurate, Mr. Bloodworth? I thought the briefing was I agreed to turn over the 60 page document and then upon reflection- I And then it, it was further requested that I, give the, that I give the packet to the interview attorney. And the problem Did with that- Did I explain to me, Mr. Nate? It's okay, you're yeah, alive. The, the, problem, the problem with that is I can't, once I assert a privilege, I can't. Ah, hold on. So Sky is looking for an order forcing her to turn it over. I am, let's see, 140.26 in. I'm going to have to refresh this tab to try to the sound with that extension. And again, it is just being a giant pain in the tuchus. Um, This volume is just the worst at the moment. So apologies. And it is making it very, very difficult. So Sky's like, I need an order to turn this over. And if you don't order me to turn it over, I'm not turning it over. And that's, she's trying to protect herself. I understand why. I get, like, I get all of that. I get it. I get it. You need, you need the court to make you do it, to make, to protect you. I get it. With that, it's okay, you're yeah, alive. The, 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 problem, the problem with that is I can't, once I assert a privilege, I can't turn it over or I waive the privilege Understood. and I can't turn over a part of it. So I guess what I need from the court today is an order telling me I need to turn over if that's no. what the court's inclined to do. No, I'm inclined to not do that. Well, so am I, it, do let's I Let's take a step okay. back. I understood, Mr. Bloodworth, that we were talking about the document, not the book. Your Honor, there's letter number two. Oh, that's what she held up? This is the one she held up. Okay. And then 60 or so pages of what she describes as the, the continuation of the walking dog Okay. So the prosecutor is not saying we want everything that was in this uh, packet of documents that Sky has. The defendant gave documents to her attorney or they were given to her attorney when she met her at the jail or whatever. The prosecutor is saying, no, we don't need all of them. What we do need is the other 60 odd pages of this walk the dog letter that she says is a narrative and the document letter that she held up um, to show to uh, others when she was talking about them. That's what they want. They don't want everything that's been given to the attorney. They want those two things. We don't know what else is in there. Right, they don't know. Well, that's the way it goes, though, when people are handing an attorney client privilege or a marked folder their attorney. Well, yep. Yes, Your Honor, but 
when removal of the material from the jail violates jail policy, that adds another wrinkle to it. Let's stay focused on the two documents. Yeah. I don't have enough to speculate about what may have been in or not in that folder. And now I understand the significance of Ms. Lazaro telling me jail staff went through the folder several times. Now I understand where you're headed with that. Let's stay focused on just the two documents. The one page that was held up, which the vernacular for that is letter number two. The vernacular is letter number two, Your Honor. It was multiple pages. Okay. And then the 60-ish page document. Correct. The Why shouldn't we handle those two documents in the way the court proposes? <laughs> The court said, why shouldn't we handle those two documents this way? I have oh my God, no objection point. to that, provided that the court ordered me to give them to the review attorney for right. the court. I, I have no objection to those two documents. Okay. Well, we're so going to need to put an order in place first, identify who the, either the review attorney or the shielded representative of the state in this process is. I understand that normally the court would just review a document and make it. The shielded representative of the state is the taint attorney that's going to make sure that the documents aren't privileged before the state sees them. An attorney that has no connection to the state to review them to make sure they aren't, in fact, attorney client privileged. Yep. The determination about privilege. This case is very high stakes. It's an aggravated felony. It has enormous amounts of attention. I don't want to make this decision without the benefit of the adversarial process. So we're going to use belt suspenders. <laughs> the court said, I don't want to make this decision without an adversarial process. So we're going to use a belt and suspenders on this one. <laughs> I, that is quite an analogy. We're go, we're doing all the things. We're going to be extra special careful. Have you determined, Mr. Bloodworth, who is going to represent the state in this process? Your Honor, not by name. Okay. We can, but the state will select somebody in short order to, to serve as the state's advocate. They need a state to turn. What I would, what I'm inclined to do is order to be conferred regarding terms of an order that will control how this process unfolds. It states in black and white who is allowed to have access and not allowed to have access to the 60-page document in letter number two, and then hopefully provide some deadlines for submitting the I mean, you two kind of documents to the that. state's shielded attorney briefing deadlines for getting it before the court. That's not a reasonable Ms. Yes. Mr. Lutton. Yes, Your Honor. That is the state's court. So the court has ordered the attorneys to work together to come up with the procedure that is going to happen. Uh, defense attorney has said, look, I understand that these things are going to be turned over. We need to make sure they're privileged. The state's not fighting that either. They're like, right, we need the shielded attorney or the taint attorney to go over them. That's fine. The court's like, get together and show me what the process is to getting this done before it becomes, be, for it to come before the court. So they are going to go through the process of turning those things over. Can you meet and confer on that with anyone? Meet and confer and write it up. December 1, I need a proposed formal order or competing proposed formal order submitted to the court. And just so I'm clear today, the court's ordering me to not disclose anything yet. Okay. Until we have the rules of this review are set, the participants are identified, those that cannot participate are identified, and that order is in place. Okay. Then everybody will know what they can. Okay. I think that's the appropriate way to handle this. Any yeah. objection, Mr. Glover? No, no. Okay. Agreed. Let's move on. All right. That handles for today uh, the motion for good cause, motion to compel a good cause disclosure.
years. To be clear, I'm not expressing any opinion one way or the other about what's in this document, whether it's material um, beyond a facial prima facie showing of good cause, uh, or whether any other privilege uh, would apply to it. I just I don't know if it had any better briefing regarding the circumstances no. under which it was created yep. and was provided to you. Okay. I think, Ms. Lazaro, Mr. Bloodworth, that brings us to conclusion on the motions that are pending in the criminal. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor, to the extent the motion to compel is concluded. Well, it's concluded for three. Yeah. We didn't, we're missing uh, one. Very good. Uh, let's turn next to the probate case. We're not going to turn next to the probate case. Miguelina, can you make a note that we are at 146.28 of this stream? I didn't realize they were addressing the probate case today. We're going to need to do the probate case another day because I would like to, I haven't covered that new briefing. So we're going to go over the probate case now that it's in front of this judge on Thursday, but we are missing the hearing on the walk the dog letter with regard to the, um, with regard to the no contact. So I'm going to go find that real quick. Because when we go towards the, or when we get to the probate issue, we have a bit more that we need to cover uh, with regard to that. So, and hopefully we can do it on a day that the internet is not dying. So we need to go find the other part of the hearing with regard to the walk the dog letter and the no contact. So I'm going to go find that right now i think i think i've gotten us there hold on let's see i'm going to try to find that real quick together so give me one second materiality of the letter would have been made and would have been wholly appropriate i'm trying to make sure that we are not repeating ourselves all right this all seems like okay. so that's why i think they all right y'all we're gonna we're gonna find this together uh <sighs> Okay, this is the very beginning of the hearing with regard to the um, the alleged prosecutorial misconduct motion to dismiss. Based upon prosecutorial misconduct. Okay, so the court just denied the motion to dismiss. Let's turn next to the state. We found it quickly. <laughs> we're gonna do we're gonna do a swoop real quick to reorient where we're at because this stream has been a bit of a shit show, and I apologize for that. Between the internet and this hearing and pulling the wrong stream, it's it's very much a post travel day. So let's reorient ourselves for a moment. Hi, we are in the middle of hearings with regard to Corey Richens, who's accused of killing her husband with a fentanyl overdose. There are multiple motions pending before the court this day. We have already covered, with some internet interruptions, the hearing on the motion for the defense to dismiss the um, complaint against Corey Richens for prosecutorial misconduct regarding to their arguments made in briefing with regard to walk the, the walk the dog letter. The court denied that motion. They are not dismissing the case. They are not excusing the Summit County District Attorney's Office. They're not doing any of that. The court said that the state's arguments in their motions to restrict Corey Richen's access to family members due to the walk the dog letter and perceived or alleged uh, witness tampering 
was fair argument within the bounds of the laws and the rules. The court we've also watched rule on a motion to compel the turnover of documents. The court was ruling on whether or not the other documents found in an envelope in the jail needed to be turned over or whether they were attorney-client privilege. There are two particular documents. One of them is letter two that Corey Richens was seen on video call with uh, her mother or brother holding up to the camera, and that is going to be reviewed. And then the rest of the 61-page novel that apparently the Walk the Dog letter is from the middle of, those are going to be turned over by the defense to an attorney to review them and make sure they are not attorney-client privilege. The court has asked the attorneys to work together to come up with an order and a process to make sure that they are um, there's nothing in it that needs to be redacted or turned over and that it's not attorney-client privileged information. I would argue that Corey Richens has already said it's a novel, so therefore the novel is never going to be attorney-client privilege and that whole letter comes in no matter what's in it. My argument. Next, we are getting to whether or not Corey will be restricted from contact or conversation with her mother and brother based on the walk the dog letter. That's the hearing we're getting to right now. That's where we stand. Two out of three ain't bad. We've got the third one starting now. So this is the third motion hearing to get to. It's motion to compel good cause disclosures. All right. Uh, there's a 60 page document. I have no idea what's in it. You claim it's. They're saying this is on the disclosures again. We just saw the motion on the disclosures. <sighs> All right. Let's. This is not the part we've watched. So let's. Let's go through it. You assert it's privileged. She is very carefully navigating this. Privileged by way of it was given to me. It wasn't given to anybody else. It wasn't published. It wasn't, nothing else was okay. done with it. So, yes, we'll that's our assertion. So, the defense asserts this 60 page or 60 something page mm -hmm. document is privileged. The state asserts it is not and is material to their case because, depending on which version of the explanation, focus on it reflects a partial factual partial fictional narrative typically what we do is in camera review and then allow the parties to make arguments regarding the content of the document and have a legal opinion about whether it is the court has not reviewed any of these documents yet so the court does not know what's in them if they're privileged or not You have access to the documents and you're in a good place to make those arguments. I can't ask the state to argue about this with one hand tied behind their back. So, do we give the review attorney access to the document with a strict order that the review attorney cannot share any of the substance of the document, certainly not the document itself, with anyone from the state, and then had a sealed proceeding by which your term team, pardon me, represents defendants' interests on this issue, the review attorney represents the state's interests, and then I make a determination. Uh, we could do that, or the court could do an in-camera review. I, we, <clears throat> or the team kind of we know that these documents exist, um, which is fair, but we know that these documents exist. The defense has admitted it. The defense is a officer of the court. They have verified that these things do exist. We know that there were a substantial amount of papers taken out in a Manila, Manila envelope. So we do know that some of them exist. So we'll see what's going on. Really? That's the kind of thing last minute. Um, as far as putting it on. 
on today. And I guess I'll, I'll put this question to the court. Part of it is that how do you want to go for it? Part of our, um, I think, concern or things we want to address as it relates to privilege is um, how, how, and, how and where it was found. And if the court is just simply inquiring as to the contents of the packet um, itself. Well, but would you acknowledge that just putting a document in an envelope labeled attorney-client privilege and handing it to your attorney and no one else, that's not sufficient. If you put a takeout menu right. in an envelope and hand it to your attorney, the takeout menu is not an attorney-client privilege communication. That's correct. It, it wouldn't be, but this isn't a takeout menu. These are her handwritten notes. I know, but so, I don't know what they but the problem is that they're her handwritten notes that she has said in a jail call are a novel. They say. So if they are, in fact, a fictional narrative where she's just writing a short story, I'm not sure they're privileged at all. Well, I think, I think. But I'm also not sure they're materials either. I was going to say, I think yeah. it needs, before anything, whether it's reviewed by the court in camera or whether it's reviewed by uh, Mr. Jordan. Um, I think there needs to be a twofold analysis as to what and what not is privileged and then what and what not may or may not be relevant before it's turned over to the state for review. I agree. What I am reluctant to do is make that determination in a vacuum without I, the I think that's, of I think advocacy that's by the defense in the state. And so I, I agree with you, though. It's a, it's a two-part determination. And the privilege issue is a gate. If I determine that it's a privileged communication, it does not get uh, produced, no matter how material it is. Right. Uh, all right, let me ask the state about this. Mr. Bloodworth, do you see where I'm headed here procedurally? Any objection? No, Your Honor, that's what the state asked. Yep, that's correct. It was unclear to me, though, whether you were asking for the review attorney to just make the call or have only the review attorney brief it. But I, what would need to be clear is the review attorney would have access to this, would be the state's agent, would have, would represent the state's interest, but none of your team and none of your office, nobody else in the executive branch could have access to the document or disclosure of its contents. His name is Bloodworth. Yep. Ugh, come here. Your Honor, I back off a little bit of what you said and say it's, it's the, the review attorney is not the state's agent. He's a neutral. She was selected by the defense. Not in my, not in my proposal. My proposal is the review attorney represents the state on this issue. Because Ms. Lazaro and her team are going to be making advocacy arguments on behalf of the defendant that I imagine go in the opposite direction. Well, Your Honor, I imagine the state too would present have at least as a threshold matter of privilege. How? You won't know what's in the document. So you need a lawyer that has access to it and it can't be well, a member of the litigation. No, Your Honor, to some degree the state does know what's in the document because the state has listened to uh, jail calls where the defendant describes in great detail what's in the document. And that Maybe, but we have no idea if that description is accurate or not. The document speaks for itself. Correct, Your Honor, but the court is asking the prosecutor how can you um how can you argue what's in the document what should be turned over if you don't know what's in the document they're saying look there's jail calls um where she describes the document and the court's saying but we don't know if those are accurate the document is the document so we want to figure out how we turn over the document if it gets turned over because if it's privileged it doesn't get turned over how the review attorney interprets the document will depend on some measure on the defendant's characterization of it. So the state. Fair enough. And so will the defense have to navigate those waters. Yes, Your Honor. The state, the state envisioned and asked for you know, a procedure with the review attorney for the court. We asked for it in the alternative, whereby. Um, the, both the state 
they end defense and present legal arguments or whatever facts they know as to whether or not particular material inside the envelope is privileged. And then you can make a threshold determination on the privilege. And then once you go past that, then there's the material determination. So not the way that you were doing this. You know, they were describing hamstrings from both sides. I'm not even sure it would be reviewable in that way. Why wouldn't we just have the state designate, I imagine it would be outside counsel, who for this specific task is walled off from the state's prosecution? My representative never said, well, we did it, this is how we did it. I can hear the defense table getting picked up on the camera as m or on the mic almost as much as I can hear the judge because the this feed has way worse audio. And with all the glitches we've had today, I can't adjust that very well. So it's uh, it's it's tough to hear whispering at counsel table. But the court is saying we can't we need to have a uh attorney to review it that's segmented off from the DA's office, which is exactly what should happen. But I can't argue why they should have access to it based upon the content of the documents. Where where do you see where do you see the error here? Your Honor, this the state's agreeable to her uh facility in the fashion the court described. Um I I've seen it work both ways. I think that what you described is perhaps more common in uh, civil litigation context than criminal one. Sure. And, and I'm fine to proceed, the state is fine to proceed in either fashion, but the state's, uh, the thrust of the state's argument in this case, the material needs to be reviewed by the individual. The defense alone cannot make the privilege determination. So what the court and the prosecutor have just agreed on is that the defense can't be the only one characterizing something as privileged or not privileged for whether it gets turned over to the prosecutor. So the court agrees with that. And the prosecutor is saying there needs to be another attorney to review it, not just the defense, but that attorney needs to be cordoned off from our office, not someone who's connected to us, a private attorney to review it. There's a lot of chatter over there, Ms. Lazaro. You, you feel like we need to yeah, different just, direction. There was a lot of chatter over there at council table while the prosecutor was talking. I got two points I'd like to make. Um, given that the court is viewing the review attorney as an arm of the state, our preference would be that the contents be reviewed in camera or at least. Yeah, I'm wrong about that. Forgive me. The, the existence of the review attorney, their, their identity um, was new to me until I read the briefing on this issue. Mm -hmm. right? And so it doesn't have to be the review attorney. But what I am trying to avoid is, on the one hand, the court making this determination without the benefit of the adversarial process. And, and I'm, we're not asking. I agree with I agree with um, the court's proposition as to how to move forward, and that it first get reviewed for privilege, and then we address materiality of it. I don't think when we when we're talking about the first step and the privilege, um, if we're arguing about whether or not certain things contained in there are privileged or aren't privileged, the state is the counsel here today should not be able to make those arguments because it negates the whole point of privilege. That's my point. Okay. And so that's why I think they, in my version of the procedure, need to have an outside lawyer whose sole role is to make those arguments on yes. behalf of the state. Right. And we have identified Mr. Yes. Jordan as that an agreed person. upon review attorney. Okay. As it relates to that. Uh, so I guess I'm envisioning probably two separate processes. We'd have a hearing on, or at least briefing on, 
on privilege and then briefing on instability. Yeah, we just do all at once. I don't know. Well, I guess, yeah. Well, if you're going to review yeah. the documents, okay. Then briefing this okay. Um, the other thing I just think is an important, like a side note, and this is probably going to come up in the briefing. The jail searched that packet multiple times and passed on everything in it. It, it, was, it was, and, and I'm, just, I'm just bringing that up as, it, and like I said, that's why I come up an argument, but, but you know, they, they've already, you know, they have been through it. The argument that Sky is making is that because the jail, and those are all parts of the executive branch, right? The the police department, the jail, the DA's office, she's arguing they've already been through it because that envelope was searched multiple times. So because it was searched multiple times, they've already been through it. So we're kind of done because the jail's already had a look at it. Uh, so that's part of why she's bringing this up. Your Honor, I, I, I want to consult with my team briefly on this, and, and part of the reason why is the review attorney is already engaged on top of this. Right. Okay. And so my my sense is we need a new attorney. Maybe so. That that I, I don't want any of these other reviews to be affected. Okay. Why don't we? We are about ninety minutes. Why don't we take a fifteen minute break? And they can't know that. To I mean, I think the state needs to make a showing as to why they think they get this packet, first no, of no, all, no, I, right? Well, all right, so let's put aside any issues of whether the way the document came to the state's attention is appropriate, should be suppressed, excluded. Put that aside. I don't have any motion like you that. Right. The state knows about it. They know some things that they, that Ms. Richards has said that they think refer to the content of the document. Or whether or not they're accurate, we'll find out. Um, the whether the defendant has to turn it over under Rule 16 will depend upon whether it's material, right? Whether there's good cause for this glitter. Hypothetically, if she's like, here is a timeline of how this went down and just gives a list of admissions and somehow it's not privileged, um, right? That's the kind of thing that would need to be. If it's here is a short story about care bears, I'm not sure it's the kind of thing that needs to be handed over. I, I Do you see the law differently? Well, yes. I, oh, I, think, I see what you're saying. I guess in my mind, we need to go back a step. I mean, we're talking about whether she's arguing. She's arguing that the court is putting the cart before the horse, if you will, and she's trying to get the court to back up and make some other determinations before it gets reviewed by the attorney. The court is saying we can't do that. So Sky is arguing it needs to be material before we have to turn it over. And the court is saying we can't determine that until it's reviewed by the review attorney because the state doesn't know if it's material or not because nobody knows what's in it because it needs to be reviewed. So we're in this like, we can't review it because we don't have to turn it over because it's not material. And we can't argue if it's material because we don't know what's in it because it hasn't been reviewed yet. And that's where this kind of push-pull is of whose part goes first. 
the turnover and review by the attorney is the part that's going first. Your Honor, you have read that correctly from their briefing. Reasonable inference in the state's view that the parts that are factual are backward looking statements about what happened. They're factual. We'll find out. But there's at least enough that the state has presented to trigger your need to assert the privilege and move to suppress. So the court has said that the state has made enough of an initial showing based on the jail call statements that we're at the point where it needs to be reviewed by an attorney. So the court has broken that push-pull, uh, um, saying, no, there's enough. I don't know. Uh, and then the trigger, the related materiality. You see it differently? I, I that's fine. <laughs> I think we can recess. Why don't we take a break? Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Uh, Listen, there's a lot of people in here. So if you need to get up and move around, that's fine. But it's 15 minutes. So if you don't want to get locked out, consider staying put. We'll be back at 3. The court is taking a break. break. Uh, what we did not get to was the rest of the hearing with regard to the... Um, with regard to the civil cases, we will get to that with the probate cases, but I did not see the court cover the no contact order. So I will be looking for that to get through on Thursday. We're going to cover the probate part on Thursday. We're going to cover Murda on Thursday. We are going to wrap this up right now because it has been a whole day. Where we are left now is that the court is going to have a review attorney look at the 61 whatever pages that Corey Richens has said in a jail call to her brother is part fictional, part real in her book. The court has not granted the defense's motion. That's an awkward way to say it. The court has denied the defense's motion to dismiss the case based on prosecutorial misconduct. And we're still waiting to see what the court rules. I will go find that to see what the court rules with regard to whether or not Corey is restricted in uh, conversations with her parents based on this. We have been through quite a lot of court hearing today. We have more court hearing to do on Thursday, and then we have Murdaugh to do on Thursday. We're going to deal with the internet between now and then. And look, I'm going to do a quick bits on this. So we have a quick bits on just Corey Richens because we all deserve it at this point, because this stream gave all of mess. <laughs> I missed you guys. I love you guys, but I am so, so disappointed with the way that the technology fucked with me today that we're going to have to do a quick bits just on this. So I will do that. If you are not subscribed over on the quick bits channel, it is at quick bits. If you want to keep in touch with what's going on at quick bits, I always put those things up in the app as well. So when we go to the app, you can get to all of it. You can get to the quick bits videos that go up on Monday and we're starting to put more of them out throughout the week. And you can go to those videos if you need just the quick refresher. So the app is where you will find all of that. The quick bits channel is where I break things down in like 10 minutes or less. I mean, sometimes they're a little longer, but 10 minutes or less so that you can just keep on, keep a top of these cases. And I try my best to do things more succinctly. So it's like this motion, this ruling, this motion, this ruling without the dig deep dive like this. Today's deep dive was a, just a shit show. I don't know what to say. It's just been a mess. Look, I will do my best to fix it. We are going to be back tomorrow with the members only live stream. Download the app. It is free. It is, uh, it is iOS and Android. It is a free app. It, uh, we protect your identity, your privacy, and all of the rest of it. 
So download the app. I will keep you in the loop. Members, I will see you tomorrow. Everyone else, I will see you Thursday. We, I will do a quick bits to fix it uh, between now and then. But I've got, we're just, it's, it, there's, today is just a mess. It's not a mess. The internet's a mess. They updated something. I, I can't. I can't. Whatever they updated didn't fucking work. I am so angry. So I'm gonna go yell at my internet provider and get some food, and uh, and we're gonna go from there. Members, stay tuned to your member spaces. I will put up a time for the stream. I've got to check my calendar um, and make sure that I can do it. But I I have a lot that we need to chat about from the behind the scenes. With all of that, you guys, thank you for hanging in there. Oh my God, today. Thanks, y'all. I appreciate you. Thank you to the mods. Thank you to my producer, Miguelina, for holding it down in all of the interruptions. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. You can stay up to date with everything I'm covering and fast notifications on our free iOS and Android app at lawnerdapp.com or search the app store for Lawnerd. You can also follow me around social media. And don't forget to check out my podcast, The Emily Show, with quick bits dropping every Monday, summarizing everything I do here on the live streams on Tuesday and Thursday for when you just have time for the quick bits. Thanks for being a law nerd.